I'm Father Gray, and this is a St. Mary's Sunday. This Sunday we hear a gospel which is of great importance, especially for Catholics. I think we know this gospel rather well. It goes like this. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Names are exchanged. This idea of possibly being mistaken for Elijah, Jeremiah, or John the Baptist is a little bit strange because who could mistake them? It essentially, be the kind of mistake that someone would make if they were just trying to choose some names that people might know from Scripture. But they were really nothing alike. They were great. They were wonderful, intense people, prophets. But there's something else being asked here, like in the Lord's response to Peter. And so I say to you, Peter, rock, and all of those other things. But before he says that, he says, Simon, son of Jonah. If we imagine what that sounds like in Hebrew, it says bar Yonah. That is to say, like, son of the dove. It's a fun little idea there that we should remember that the reason why, in fact, it says so in the gospel, that he says this is because it was not that which was earthly knowledge in any kind of way that reveals this, but rather the wisdom of God. This is the action of the Holy Spirit. Fantastic. Incidentally, in a later time when the Lord asks him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Between Yonah and Johanna, which is what that would, would be, uh, there's very, very little difference. Interestingly, Johanna is, bar Johanna would be son of the grace or favor of God. So we have son of the dove, son of the grace of God. Doesn't that sound like the Holy Spirit? <laughs> it's just one of those interesting things, which maybe isn't particularly useful, but is an interesting detail, and it's sitting right there, especially about what happens next. He's the rock on which the church is built. For us, our rock of the church is really Christ himself. This is why we have a love of having stone altars in our church, that there should be a relationship between the altar and therefore the whole church with Christ and that action which is his sacrifice for us. And it's not just that. It's also this aspect of being able to recognize the Lord, obviously, the importance of being able to discern this correctly is of incredible importance, and it does actually require the grace of God. Sometimes we feel a little bit bad when the people that we love, the people that we know, don't really love God particularly much, or they don't show it. Um, these things that, for example, in our own families, when our children don't really have a love of that which is a religion, we become disheartened. It is actually a grace of God, and it happens at the right time. We shouldn't rush it. We shouldn't put things at the wrong time for the sake of doing that. It kind of like, you know, frankly, like, a, I don't know, popping the clutch on the car jolts a little bit, and it's not necessarily a pleasant thing. Our lives should be lives in which we can recognize the Lord, and not just the Lord among a variety of other biblical personages like this, but our Lord himself. This requires the grace of the Holy Spirit. Moreover, it is something that we do like to announce, even though at this point the Lord reminds his followers not to publicize this information too much, because it wasn't the right time. Again, 
at the right time, the grace of the Lord is with us. At the right time, the grace of the Lord allows us to speak this truth very plainly. And it's not just a truth that is, therefore, Peter, therefore, the church, therefore, our history together, but rather of who Christ is, the Son of the living God, Christ the Messiah, not just someone else, but the one who saves, the one who redeems, and the one who lives for us, dies for us, brings us into his eternal life with him. Nothing less than what our relationship is in terms of our life with God forever in heaven. This is what is encapsulated in calling him the Son of God. All our lives, we are trying to put names to things. We try to understand them and be able to talk about them better. Hopefully, we can also see our Lord Christ clearly for exactly who he is. This is something which, frankly, I think we should come toward in a little bit of fear and trembling. This requires us to hum humble ourselves very, very much to acknowledge that we are not absolute masters of everything in front of us, that we are not the chosen one of God, but rather this guy, our Lord Jesus Christ is. And it is with people like Peter, who are not perfect, that he chooses to build his church. Frankly, people like us. What a great thing to give thanks to God for. As we hope and pray that more people that we love come to the church, and again, I think this is a phenomenon that we all know, come to this faith, come to this love of God. We also hope that we will see our Lord truly and understand him and be able to love him just as he is. This is very much a kind of a centerpiece of our faith, isn't it? This is our Catholic Church, and not because of the Pope, not because of a succession of things built on this Peter, who is the rock upon which the Lord builds his church, but rather because of being able to recognize him fully, to be able to recognize our Lord clearly, to be able to speak with the Holy Spirit in our lips that our Lord Christ is the Son of God, and therefore, we believe so many things based on that. This Sunday, we have a marvelous gospel to keep us close in our hearts to this love of God. May it always be so. And may we also respond with wisdom on our lips, rather like that which is the Holy Spirit coming in the form of a dove. <laughs>